Vince Ferragamo. And I'm Jackie Schlater. We want to invite you to join us each and every week on our show, On Point Live Stream. We're going to give you the inside scoop. Don't miss, miss it. it. Hello, everybody. I'm Vince Ferragamo, former Los Angeles Rams quarterback. And alongside of me is uh, my good buddy, Hall of Famer Jackie Slater. And Jackie, this is week 15 in the NFL. Oh, yeah. week. This is a crazy week. week. This is a week where don't leave your seat early week, Jackie, because <laughs> there's a lot of these games were determined in the last drive of a game, the last minute of a game, or in overtime. So and exciting. You went to see the Patriots oh, play. My goodness. I have never been, I have never, in all of my association with this great game, certainly professionally, have I ever seen a game in the way that, that game did in Vegas did, uh, last night. It was just, uh, it was just mind blowing. But the good thing about uh, everything was that the young man who made the last pass that threw it to Jones, <laughs> he stood up like a man. It, it was completed all right, just for the wrong, in the wrong direction. He stood up like like a man and said, "Hey, I was trying to make a play. I was trying to do something. I never, I never should have done. I should have understood the situation just going at." So you you can appreciate that, but nonetheless, that was that no was some bad decisions been made. No time on no the time on the clock. And the ball ends up in the hands of Chandler Jones, who was a former Patriot. A former first round, by the way. See them. <laughs> he ran all the way back, and Mac Jones had a chance to grab him and tackle. Oh him. my goodness! No, well, let's not talk about that. Was, yes, let me. I, I want. I got it. When I saw ball. that, when I saw that, I said, "I'm going to ask Vince as soon as I see him. Did you guys ever do any tackling drills as quarterbacks when you play? I, I don't know. I, I, I've never seen a a, a more Disorganized. It was just, it, just, it, it was just, it was just, just like he didn't have the slightest yeah. inclination as to how to get a guy on the ground. Like he had never worked on his tackle. No, nobody expects a quarterback well, to tackle anyway. Well, he kept on the anyway. back or something. Until someone else comes to help you out. He went to, slow him down yes, or something. He went for the legs. <laughs> And for all we know, that was a, that was a gallant effort on his part because maybe nobody ever taught him how to make a tackle. Well, how about that? But. You know, it should have never happened. It should have been in overtime. And, and, you know, you're looking at the Patriots. Oh, they could probably pull this thing out. Yes. But as things turned out, Jackie, it, it just uh, didn't get the overtime. Didn't end that way. It was, it was so, a really weird finish. There were so many weird finishes, Jackie. How about the Minnesota group? The Vikings played the Colts. The greatest comeback in NFL history. In NFL history. Yeah, they were down 33. It's not unbelievable. unbelievable. People were leaving the game. They were turning it off. Oh my goodness, I, I just, I, you know, to me, it's just unfathomable how many things went well for them, Vince. Oh. I mean, the, the turnovers, the time we turned, the, the scoring after the turnovers, the, the passes, the, the ones, that everything was flawless. You, it couldn't have been better. And it was almost as if, you know, it was almost as if they just stopped and started watching the Vikings play football. And, and, and I the can't... Vikings do it each and every week, Jackie. They find ways to win. Now, I mean, obviously, you know, any win is a good win. Any win is a good win. A, a win is a win in national exactly. football. Exactly. Everybody's a pro. They got pros on their team just like just like yep. Minnesota does. But, I mean, the way they, they lost this ball game, it, you could see. One thing that I noticed, Vince, there was a consistent stream of concerted mental effort on the parts of the, of the Minnesota Vikings. They were focused. And like I heard that their their head coach say, you know, when they left that halftime uh, meeting, uh, they they had a central focus that permeated the whole team. So everybody knew that they had to be on top of that game, uh, their game, to win the game. And, and it was about, obvious. Talk about a halftime speech, Jack. That had there had to be something said that that Minnesota Kevin, locker room. Kevin O'Connell. Kevin O'Connell. That was a masterful job. Whatever it was he said, whatever they did, whatever that procedure was, it worked. And everybody, that football team was a totally different team after they came out of locker. Totally I, different. Team. I saw it was thirty-three to seven. Then I, I looked at it maybe a couple minutes later. It was thirty-three to twenty-one. <laughs> it's like this. They're starting to make a comeback. Yeah. But you never thought that it was going to be a comeback to win the game. Well, I mean, you thought it was just going to be a comeback to make it interesting. And you talked about the running game for over and over and over, Jackie. You were really happy. Running attack. Absolutely. Because if you keep, continue to throw the foot, incomplete pass and stop the clock, it gives your opponent a chance to get Much more back. time to. How about that out. Buffalo Bills game against uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Miami Dolphins? Well, in Buffalo, cold weather game. Jackie, they were throwing snowballs on the field. They were 
throwing, I mean, it, it was, was amazing how that. I tell you, Jackie, of all the games I've seen this year, the most entertaining I've seen is the Buffalo Very, very entertaining. And you know what it is best is because they have a quarterback who primarily operates from the pocket, but who is anxiously looking forward to those opportunities when he can take off and run. I mean, there was one situation that came up in the game where it was clear that it was man-man -man coverage. The backers in the middle of the field were dropping to their zone, had their backs on the quarterback, and secondary guys were falling out deep. And he saw it, and he just took off. So, I mean, here's a guy you know, at 240 pounds who wants to operate from the pocket vest, who realizes that it's a rare and special occasion for him to take off and it gives his team an advantage. This is the kind of quarterback I think you like. I think Jalen Hurts is that way. I mean, he's not as big and physical, but they don't just take off. They want to beat you from the pocket as passers first, which I think that every good quarterback that I played with or ever will want to play with, I want them in the pocket beating people down the field with the ball. And then if they have the ability to take off, Look, so be it. And just you know, it's just going to be better for us. Well, I I think you know, so much of the game today is so much more. The, the offenses are opened up so much that it affords the quarterback the opportunity to be more elusive you know, on his feet. He can be on the move a lot, Jackie. And you know, I think the game has kind of evolved that in that direction. But when you look at a guy like uh, uh, Josh Allen in the pocket. Feel so comfortable. You just you don't really have any um, reservations when you see him. Right? I mean, you just think that something good's gonna happen. Something good's gonna if happen. If the guy's be open, it throwing he's gonna throw or it. running. If he's not open, he's gonna run he's gonna and he's gonna run over somebody. I mean, uh, that's just the way he plays. And you know, another great quarterback in Patrick Peterson mm -hmm. stayed with him too, Jenner. Mm -hmm. So I mean, Cleveland. I mean, I, you know, who did they play yesterday? Let's see, Kansas City played. Um, the Texans, you know, and it was a close game again because you thought the Chiefs were just going to run away with that game. You know, it seems that Andy Reid, Andy Reid, in my opinion, has his finger on the pulse of this football team as well as any coach, uh, knowing his team, knowing what their strengths are. And, you know, Patrick Mahomes, I think he rests in the fact that he knows that Andy Reid is going to put him always in a position to have a positive impact on the game. Yeah. And I think that that maybe maybe more so Vince than most quarterbacks and head coaches in the National Football League. I think they're on the same page, and I think I think they trust one another. From day one, they were they bad. really trust one another. I think Patrick yeah. Mahomes thinks that Andy Reid is, is you know is, is all of that in a bag of chips, and whatever he tells him to do and how he teaches him to do it, that's what he's going to try to do. So it's an impressive. I think they 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 have to be the envy of the National Football League. Their relationship. Well, you know, you hit on a really good point, Jackie, and that could be the reason why we see some of these teams are struggling. You see Tom Brady. He's away from the Belichick era now, and he struggles this year, and maybe maybe age has something to do with it. You also see Aaron Rodgers struggling. I mean, when you talk about Andy Reid and, and uh, Eric Bieniemy, they translate that off the game plan down to the quarterback and through the and everybody is on the right page. Everybody's on the right page. And they understand each other and they play for each other. And that's what makes this team a great team. Another team I see in the 49ers, Jack. Oh. 49ers with uh, Kyle Shanahan. How about the defense, man? Their defense, man. I, that, their defense is, it reminds me of the back in the days when Fred Dean, you remember Fred Dean came off the bench and won the MVP when he was up there in San Francisco. It reminds me of those days when just everybody is put in a position to do what they really want to do well. That's either rush the passer, play on run downs. They've done a great job of platooning people in on downs that they need to have them play their very, very best. And I think that that's, a, that's an indication of, of a coach that understands situational football, number one. But then number two, he, he's done a fantastic job of putting the right people on the field at the right time. And they're making plays in their area of strength. That, yeah. And that's what you want. You want your best players doing what they do best when the situation requires their best effort. And they're platooning, like you said, Jackie. They're they're getting guys in and out of their lineup, and they and you don't see any drop-off when the next guy right. gets in the lineup. And, and that's he's because playing. he's operating in, he's, yeah. he, this is my time to go do my thing. Right. Kind of, yeah, he understands know? his position, his contribution to the team. Right. I think that makes a big difference. But they can get after the quarterback. 
And I've seen no other fiercest defense, I think, all year long than the 49er defense. And they can stop the run, Jackie. And, and so D'Amico Ryan is the defensive coordinator. He, he yeah, played 10 years good. in the yeah. National Football League. He's a young guy. Came got from Alabama, of, didn't he, Jackie? Yeah, got a yeah. lot of energy, man. Got a lot of energy, and that permeates those guys. You know, defensive guys, they have mm-hmm. assignments and everything, but they are react and go get the ball guys. Yeah. And so you put those guys in a situation where they're feeling good about what they're doing like like he's do- consistently done every week, then that's the kind of defensive effort that you're going to get. And what do we say about defense, yeah. guys? In the yeah, playoffs, you, if you can yeah. run the football, which is what they're doing in San Francisco, and yeah. if you play great defense, that travels in the National yeah. Football League, and that wins games and a lot of time championships. And those are the teams we're talking about, Jackie. Some of these teams are on the top of their division. And they're headed for the playoffs. We're three weeks away. And uh, as we bring you this uh, show live tonight, uh, we're watching the Rams play uh, the Packers in Green Bay in the cold, in the frozen tundra, Jackie. And I think before game time, it was like five degrees above zero. Right, <laughs> no, right. Maybe now it's it's uh, probably hovering over zero degrees. But, you know, it's a 3-3 tie here in the second quarter. We've seen some uh, plays already. We've seen Aaron Rodgers just miss a wide-open receiver. Unbelievable. He had all day to throw. Unbelievable. He's been that great. With no, with you, you no think, uh, Aaron Donald in the game. You think it's his thumb? Well, uh, you know, I didn't <laughs> you even would think know, of that. You would know better than uh, anyone else, man. Well, look at the time he's got again. Thumb. Well, he made yeah, a very good. He made a very good decision there. That was about a twelve-yard pickup, yeah. and, and he hit the guy about uh, two yards behind the line of scrimmage. Well, so he, had on he the, read the defense and did a good job. Yeah, on the play we talked about, he had Lazard open on the diagonal, oh, kind of yeah, a, a, a yeah. slip-through route, and you know he's trying to get the ball to Watson, who's probably one of the most prolific receivers in the NFL the last seven weeks, Jackie. With but yards he ended spot. up throwing it right directly right to, to Taylor the Rapp. Yeah, <laughs> That's right. he did. He just overthrew him. Threw I right. mean, he was over Lazard's head and just like, why? But Vince, you know, uh, you know, I want to change the subject a minute. We're sitting here watching this game, and, and you know historically how I feel about the running game. Yeah. And, you, you know, what you would anticipate, you would anticipate in a game like this tonight that Sean McVay would come out and mm. not put Baker Mayfield in a position where he's hurling the football all over the place, but run the ball. Run the ball. Run the ball. Especially and, against a defense that's been poor against the run. Absolutely. Jackie, and use year. some ingenuity doing it. And yeah. Vince, I got to tell you, for the first time. You saw it. For the first time, perhaps it. since Sean McVay right. has been here, I saw them run a counter. And they picked up about eight yards on the play. So wow. in three weeks now, in three games now, I've seen three different plays that they have run. Starting with a tackle trap, pulling that 332-pound tackle over there and trapping him, Rob Havenstein, and today running the counter. They might be onto something, Jackie, because they won last week. Absolutely. And, you know, they win tonight, and they'll be 2-0. They're going to start their their transition back into things. And Baker Mayfield, you know, with two days rest last year or last week joining the team, Jackie, (laughs) he drives them 98 yards. It was, it, was, it was impressive, Vince. Yeah, it was. And, and, and to say that that doesn't mean anything is minimizing minimizing what actually happened. But I think the thing that I'm looking for here tonight is how uh, close to what we have seen Sean yeah. McVay do and have a lot of success doing, is he going to be able to get with Baker Mayfield? If Baker Mayfield is going to be able to run this offense as right. efficiently as Sean McVay yeah. would like for it to be run. And that's mixing up all the passing game, the fly sweep, and threw that counter in there, like I said. Right. I'm, I'm watching this, and, and I want to see Baker Mayfield comfortably handle, because like I told you last week, I don't think he has had to deal with the entire playbook that Sean McVay yeah. has. Well, you, you might be right about that, Jackie. You know, only time will tell. Uh, but, I, but I do think that the fact that how long will the Rams stay with the run game is a really important question to see as this game as progresses it goes along, and goes yes. forward. So we're here in the second quarter, early in the second quarter, Jackie, still 3-3 tie. When we come right back, we'll talk more about the Rams season and uh, what they have to look forward to coming up, and we'll get you caught up on this game. So stay with us. Hi, I'm Vince Ferragamo. And I'm Jackie Slater. We want to invite you to join us each and every week on our show, On Point Livestream. We're going to give you the inside scoop. Don't miss it. it. 